Google says AI a billion times in their I.O. stream. AI, AI, AI. It uses AI to bring AI, 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 AI. Google also releases Palm 2, the answer to GPT-4. The research paper that goes along with it at first glance seems to confirm that Palm 2 is incredible, but some things don't add up. Sam Altman cryptically tweets, we are so back, vicious. But to understand what's actually happening, let's look at Google's 92 page paper on Palm 2. So some results in this paper seem to suggest that Palm 2 is at least as good as GPT-4 in a lot of the tests that it performed. For example, on reasoning tasks, here's a quote from Google. The ability of large models to reason, to combine multiple pieces of information and to make logical inferences is one of their most important capabilities. Google then shows how their model is similar and in some cases better than GPT-4, OpenAI's model. Compare the two papers, it's hard to make an apples to apples comparison. Let's look at the coding, for example. Before Palm 2 came out, here were the existing scores on human eval, a Python coding test to evaluate how well large language models can code. All the scores are percentage points, so 100 would be the perfect score. So Palm 1 reached a score of 26.2, GPT 3.5, that was the original chat GPT that was released, 3.5. That got a score of 48.1, and GPT-4 got a 67. Massive leap. All these were marked zero shot, meaning that no examples were given. The model had to answer the questions without being shown examples of similar problems. It had to do it from its own existing knowledge and skill set. So here are the human eval results for Palm 2, Google's latest model. Notice it splits it into pass at one and pass at whatever. In this case, uh, pass at 100. So for example, for the Python coding tasks, it comes in at a staggering 88.4%. But pass at 100 means that it gets 100 tries to get it right. Basically, when asked the question, it produces 100 possible responses. And if one of those is correct, then it gets marked as being correct. So it's like a, if you had an exam where it's kind of like a multiple choice, but instead of a multiple choice, you could write a hundred different answers. And as long as one of them got close, you're okay. If it has to get the right answer on the first try, that number drops to 37.6. And getting the answer right in the first try is how these models are generally tested. Why Google decided to go with 100 tries, I'm not too sure. And this isn't the basic Palm 2. This, this model has been outfitted with additional code related tokens. So here's a ranking of these LLMs from the website papersWithCode.com. GPT-4, zero shot, again, meaning no examples given, had to figure out from its own existing knowledge, no sort of hints about how to do it. It gets a 67, which puts it at number one. It's the best AI LM model that we have for coding. Palm comes in at number seven with a score of 37.3, but it's not even the basic model. It's the dash S, which is outfitted with, like I said, various coding tools. And it's not zero shot, it's few shot. Meaning that was given, you know, several or a few examples of how to solve similar problems. The only way it could beat GPT-4 is by allowing it to try answering 100 times and then seeing if one of those is correct. So again, that's not a good comparison to what GPT-4 is doing. Now the code T model, which is, it's still an open AI model and it's from 2022. It gets a similar score to the latest Palm 2 with just one tenth of the tries. So, so at pass at 10, it's almost the same as Google is with pass at 100. So this, this doesn't make any sense. Please let me know if I'm being extra dense here, if I'm just not getting something here, if I'm missing something. But this seems to say that Google with all its resources and brain power and all its massive capital, billions of dollars, with its massive head start that it had, now, and keep in mind that Google was the one that published the attention is all you need paper back in 2017. That was kind of the breakthrough for a lot of this AI stuff that we're seeing now because they published it, they put it out there. That's what happened. That's what allowed a lot of these companies that we're seeing now to get out there and compete and build their own models that may not have happened without that paper being published by Google, which by the way, you're seeing Google with these papers now being a little bit more secretive, not publishing all the information out there. I think at some point they realized, or at least they regretted publishing attention is all you need, maybe. And now they're going, okay, we're not gonna just put our information out there, which OpenAI is doing the same thing. So certainly both of them are playing with their cards close to their chest. So, but I'm saying with 
all of that, Google can't come even remotely close to building something that's like GPT-4, at least in its coding ability, just right out of the box. They have to resort to various add-ons and tools and then running it a hundred times just to approach chat GPT's numbers. Is that the only way they can beat GPT-4? So is this real? What What's happening here? Keep in mind too, that there was a story where apparently a lot of Google AI researchers either walked out or threatened to walk out and quit um, because Google trained its AI on GPT-4, on OpenAI's technology as a way to sort of catch up. So from where I'm sitting, it just seems like Google is pulling out all the tricks and falling way short. And so here's the main point of this paper, I think. At least I, I think this is what Google wants for people to see. So here's here they show that Palm 2 is beating GPT-4 on several metrics, on several tests. But there seems to be skull duggery afoot. Meaning I'm not sure if this is still an apples to apples comparison. Notice Palm 2 is using some things to improve the results. Instruction to invariant, chain of thought, and self-consistency. Self-consistency means that they generate multiple responses and then see which answer seems to be the most consistent across all the responses. So if response one says A, response two says A, and response three says B, they go, okay, so A appears more often, we're gonna go with A. Chain of thought is basically asking the model to think through its responses step by step. Now, this has been shown in, in a lot of studies to produce better results often. It, it works very well. In fact, if you saw the Khan Academy adding OpenAI's AI to their training platform, to their teaching platform, the founder, I forget his name, Mr. Khan, I think, I assume, he talks about like one of the hacks that they've used is for their AI tutors, they ask them to go through all the steps of solving a problem that they're gonna present to their students. So when students answered the problem, the AI was better able to walk them through if they made any mis mistakes or how to think about the problem, et cetera. So if you if you're ever get to experience Khan Academy's AI, it's important to understand that before it even asks you the question, it kind of generates its own thoughts and its own, its own system for how to answer it. And then it asks you the question. And then when you answer the question, it sort of uses its memories to try to walk you through how to solve the problem. Keep an eye on the space. AI and education is going to be a big deal, I think. So anyway, so Google is using this chain of thought to improve the results. Now in the GPT-4 paper, OpenAI mentions using chain of thought for, for one of the tests. And its results are much better than Palm 2 or Flan Palm 2. So the Flan means that this version has been trained on more data that would help it do better in this exam. So they, they added some specific data that they think they might help. So you see what I mean. They're adding a lot of stuff. They're trying a lot of stuff to try to get a little bit more performance out of the system, where GPT-4 seems to be just kind of straight out of the box being able to perform. So I think that the best comparison, the best side-by-side -side comparison is looking at those two highlighted elements. So unmapped GPT-4 scored 42.5 and Palm 2 scored 34.3. On GSM-8K, GPT-4 scored 92 and Palm 2 scored 80.7. So that's when they used, they both used chain of thought. So the results, the other results that um, Google, where it shows the Palm 2 seems to do better. I don't know if they're accurate side-by-side -side comparisons. They're not showing the same thing. All right, so the next big thing that stood out to me in the paper was how much of that paper was devoted to responsible AI. And responsible here defined by Google is something that's very different from what all the other AI leaders and AI players in the space focus on. For example, others in the space are concerned about AI's risk to humanity, the dangers of AI for warfare, for example. I know in Congress right now, they're looking to pass a bill that restricts how AI can be used to launch nuclear weapons, for example. They're thinking about how AI and automation will replace human workers and how to create some sort of economic system to support the people that are gonna be replaced by AI. So now this is what Elon Musk and Sam Altman, Satya Nadella, Microsoft as a whole, the papers that they put out, that Bill Gates talks about, that Max Tegmark talks about, that Elizer Yudkovsky, I hope I'm getting his name right, Elizer Yudkovsky. These are the problems that they're all discussing. Now, each one of them kind of has their own take, their own sort of thing that they focus more on. But in general, those are the things that they're concerned about. That's the conversation that's happening in the space. So for example, the godfather of AI, Dr. Jeffrey Hinton, who has recently quit his job at Google 
is warning about the risks of AI. So it seems like he wanted to get out of Google so that he can talk more broadly about the risks and dangers of AI without, you know, seeming like he's talking about Google. He just wanted to not confuse the two subjects. He wanted to talk about it without necessarily talking about Google. So there's this quote by him from New York Times. But gnawing at many industry insiders is a fear that they're releasing something dangerous into the wild. Generative AI can already be a tool for misinformation. Soon it could be a risk to jobs. Somewhere down the line, tech's biggest warriors say it could be a risk to humanity. It's hard to see how you can prevent these bad actors from using it for bad things, Dr. Hinton says. So we've heard many concerns about the dangers of AI, right? But in this Google paper, I wasn't able to find any references to any of those concerns. However, a very large portion of this paper dives deeply into the harm of misgendering people. So around 25 pages from this 92 page document are talking about misgendering and using wrong pronouns. So developers using this AI to build products are cautioned that while Google did a lot of work on preventing toxic outputs, the developers have to further fine tune the outputs to make sure that no unsafe language is generated. And they also give them some ideas about how to do that, how to sort of prevent certain things from being said by AI. Looking at how many times each word gets used in this document, gender is in the top 20 most commonly used words, right after the word toxicity. Even other sections in the paper that talk about stereotypes and bias, they seem to take a backseat to specifically talking about gender pronouns. Again, I'm not making any statements about this. I don't want this to become an argument. I know this is a hot button issue for a lot of people. I'm simply pointing it out because this paper does have a lot of it devoted to the subject. Somewhere between a quarter to a third of this paper is about the subject. There's a lot of text about it. There's a lot of charts about it. A lot of the, the scientific references link up to studies that are about related things. And a lot of this conversation is about gender, non-binary people and pronouns. And of course, that's very different from how other AI papers are. Places like Stanford, Microsoft, OpenAI, a lot of these other ones they've released papers kind of covering the same sub subject, and they're not talking about the same thing that Google is talking about. So for context, here's a very similar paper from OpenAI about GPT-4. So this is the model that Palm 2 is competing with. So OpenAI's paper also has multiple pages that talk about examples of how they're taking steps to improve the safety of GPT-4. But the examples of unsafe outputs are things like GPT-4 explaining how to synthesize dangerous chemicals at home using relatively simple ingredients and basic kitchen supplies. That's one example that they provide. It explains how to create a bomb and also how to get products that are age restricted. So those are the type of prompts that OpenAI is concerned about. And then OpenAI then creates these sort of blocks so that the ChatGPT says it politely declines to answer those subjects. And then OpenAI, so it concludes with, we are collaborating with external researchers to improve how we understand and assess potential impacts as well as to build evaluations for dangerous capabilities that may emerge in future systems. We will soon publish recommendations on steps society can take to prepare for AI's effects and initial ideas for projecting AI's possible economic impacts. So OpenAI here seems to define safety as the potential for its models to cause physical harm for people to be able to hurt themselves or others, and as well as the sort of economic impacts of this technology rolling out. And so all those things, along with also with AI alignment, that seems to be the definition of AI safety for most of the players in the space. When most people are talking about AI safety, that is what they mean. Google's big focus on safety seems to be centered around gender, using the, the proper pronouns, as well as to a slightly lesser degree, identity groups in general. Now, I'm going to be honest, I don't know too much about this. I'm not qualified to comment on this in one way or another. But in the past, I've been really impressed with the knowledge that the viewers of this channel have on a wide variety of issues. If you can shed some light on this issue, I would love to hear your take on this. Please leave a comment. Obviously, be civil, even if you have strong feelings about this matter. This isn't meant to start an argument, but this is simply for my own edification, and I'm sure there's other people that are watching the channel that maybe would want to know more about this in a non-biased educational way. But the question is, what's driving this decision by Google? Why does Google and no other AI company that I'm aware of 
why are they uniquely placing this as the top safety concern? So please comment, be cool, and uh, back to AI. So what does this paper mean? So from where I'm sitting, it looks like after a year plus of work, now keep in mind that GPT-4 was available a, a long time before it was released to the rest of us, it was released to the public. But after a long time, after the Google CEO declared code red for Google because of ChatGPT, after a massive focus on AI by this company that was supposed to be the number one player in the AI space for a long time, the big product of all that work and investment and focus is Palm 2. And Palm 2 seems to not be as good as GPT-4. So Google Bar got updated to Palm 2 a day or two ago, it seems. I've tested its answers and they are better. They're better than the original bar. So it's better than before. The paper states Palm 2 is a massive improvement of Palm 1. And yeah, it, that seems true. I would agree with that. But both in the test that they published and also in my own testing with bar and my own little experimentations, it still seems like they're far, far away from GPT-4. So I think part of the paper is Google trying to point out the positive things that they're doing. So they're focused on being multilingual. They're talking about having multiple sizes of the models to fit different tasks and being able to translate better between languages and being strong across all the languages that they're trained on, which are all great things. And it seems like they are ahead of OpenAI on those things. But as far as its ability to code, reason, and write, it seems that GPT-4 is better right out of the box. Now, Palm 2 can be outfitted with various tools and add-ons to help it improve. Some tests seem to be kind of cherry-picked, I would say, to show the best possible outcome for Palm 2 instead of trying to show a fair side-by-side -side comparison. And so that's how I'm reading Sam Altman's tweet, we are so back. I think that's a subtle dig at Google. So after watching a lot of the interviews with Sam Altman, he seems to deliver his killing blows in quiet tones. So Google's stock is up about 10% from their IO presentation. I'm not one to try to time the market or predict stock market moves, but I can't help but wonder if Google's price will take a hit once all this information is fully digested. Let me know what you think. Subscribe for some more spicy AI content. My name is Wes Roth, and thank you for watching.